OG Bros, and today we're going to be talking about the Second Philosophy Portal Conference on Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche, Spiritual Leadership for Our Time. This conference was at the end of a class on the classic and essential texts by Mr. Nietzsche, and it, it was hosted and led by Dr. Cadell Lass. There is tremendous work being done at Philosophy Portal, I highly suggest it. And I had the pleasure of being part of this conference, um, and there was two days of presentations that Dr. Last um, hosted, and that's very impressive. Uh, I salute Dr. Last for being there uh, for all of these, and I've enjoyed them tremendously. Um, Thomas uh, Hamelrick did one that connected Nietzsche with Gerard. Owen Cox had an interesting investigation into um, seeing Nietzsche as this redemptive power through like the serpent uh, in Genesis, which blurs the line between the light bearer and Lucifer. Dimitri connected the, ter the terminate being of Hegel with uh, the Nietzschean overman and the spirit, spirit child, which I thought was really tremendous. Max, Max Mackin talks about Nietzsche and helping us write in blood. I love how we use that in overcoming shame and practices of writing that can help with that. Jason Bernstein focused on evolution becoming conscious in itself and the difference between that will to power that manifests, say, through the conscious evolution as opposed to a non-conscious um, evolution. And there was a lot there that was very important. Uh, Quinn Whelan discussed identifying with one symptom uh, and how that is very important for Amal Fati that Nietzsche brings out. Um, Michelle Garner uh, talked about motherhood in Nietzsche. Uh, Samuel Barnes brought in the invention of a deity. Joel, Joel Dietz talked about um, meme culture and Nietzsche. Um, Daniel Frege brought in design, really bringing together psychoanalytic thought with Nietzsche and design, and he wrote a very important book called Ontological design. Um, Carl Hayden Smith made a fascinating distinction between hyperhumanism and transhumanism, and I found that really interesting. The difference between replacing human beings with technology and transhumanism and hyperhumanism, where one is using technology to enable human dimensions. Um, I found that a useful distinction. Chitan talked about Nietzsche and negtropathy, which is the opposite of entropy, and how those are at play in Nietzsche. He made a point on how it's um, easy to imagine life almost continuing more than dead matter, which is curious because we tend to think of life ending with entropy, but there's actually a way in which life um, kind of compacts entropy. Um, uh, Kalia, she had a very interesting one that incorporated uh, David Foster Wallace and the repetition of the novels. She also brought in um, David Hume and how even if something repeats, the, the mind uh, does not repeat in the same way. Um, I really uh, also Shali brought in uh, the role of unlearning with Zarathustra's child and how in, in Nietzsche the, the unlearning things is just as important as learning things. Um, Jordi Dalla, oh, I am a big fan of thinking education in Nietzsche. I think it is in, very, very important to reconsider education in terms of Nietzsche, which for me gets into incubations of intrinsic motivation. Uh, Brendan brought an interesting investigation into the emergence of the integral stage and the limited web in general and um, and how that has emerged uh, in that brought in the work of um, Dr. Uh, brought in the work of um, Lehman Pascal. Um, and and I also the liminal web other Brendan so that that was just very interesting uh, living with from Eros that's I think the topic of Eros with which Pamela spoke on is I just think very important because will in Nietzsche and Eros Eros go together and there's something about where Nietzsche wants us to, to live in terms of Eros. Um, and classically, Eros is considered one of the highest loves. Now it has to be in concert with Agape and, you know, the four loves, as Lewis will talk about. But thinking in terms of Eros is important. Um, Nix Davis talked about chaos and direction on the frontier of the unknown. And that's a good way to describe. I love that title for it indeed describes what Nietzsche puts forth. Um, David is focused on what the metamorphoses of spirit in the network age means, uh, and I like the phrase, the digital desert and the burning overman. Um, and it is very important, I think, to think about the metamorphosis in the digital ed. Um, James Wisdom had an interesting presentation on uh, my wild wisdom, which brings together the question of if wisdom can be incubated in any other set of setting other than a kind of wilderness, a wild wilderness. If wisdom is something that requires that kind of territory, which would suggest we can't learn wisdom, say, 
in a, um, a, a traditional classroom setting, that there's something about the wild and the wiz wil wilderness that is necessary for wisdom. Uh, George Dyke went through personal stories on the di that brought him to a, onto the topic of dialectics of self-love, which I think Nietzsche um, brings to our attention, and I enjoyed listening to George's um, consideration um, of Nietzsche in terms of his life story. Javier Rivera talked about dancing kenosis theory and practice, which brought up a very interesting term on um, tension relativity that I think is very helpful and that Nietzsche would have us ask what is um, an area that relative to us is tension and to push into that tension. But that a good metaphor for thinking about this though is going to be um, dancing because we have to have timing in dancing, you have to have the other for dancing. And just bringing that all together the way that Javier did was very fruitful um, and I always appreciate what he brings to the table. Um, I spoke on the Overman and the allegory of the cave uh, because I think we can think of Nietzsche in terms of Plato, and that's useful. Um, Thomas Wynn brought in from becoming to letting a really interesting distinction in terms, and he's a great hot, um, Heideggerian scholar and thinker, and what he brought to the table in the conversation of Nietzsche I think was very important. Um, and, and then Andrew Sweeney from Parallax talked about the hermit, the hangman, and the star, um, bringing in tarot symbolism, which was is very useful for understanding what Nietzsche is doing in Thus Spoke Zarathustra, because there's a lot of imagery and symbolism that overlays. Um, and Mr. Sweeney's presentation was fascinating. Um, we then had a discussion afterwards, uh, all of which was possible thanks to Cadell Last. Um, I highly suggest uh, reviewing the presentations. I've only sampled them here. You can find them all for free on philosophyportal.com to be streamed and enjoyed. Um, I think going through uh, these conversations really brings out the possibility of these new intellectual developments that are happening online and what they can bring, what what they can create, and how they can inspire people. And it's just wonderful to see this happening. And for for its existence, we are in Dr. Last's debt. Um, so thank you uh, for more by Dr. Last. Please visit Philosophy Portal, his YouTube page. Um, he, you can find his papers, I highly suggest, and um, you should visit his work today. And thank you so much for your time.